Hey guys, how are you today? Okay, so my name is Sharon McLaughlin. I am the creator of the Whole Body Weight Loss Blueprint and I am the owner of this group here. I created it so that we can come share, support each other. Thanks for joining the group. I really appreciate it. I am truly honored. So I wanted to talk about leaky gut today because I get a lot of questions, you know, leaky gut, inflammation. So I thought that this would be a great topic to cover. The bottom line is when it, I want to start off this talk by saying, we don't know a lot about leaky gut. We know that it exists, but we truly don't know what diseases it's associated with. Like, um, does does leaky gut cause the disease or is it the disease itself causing the leaky gut? So I wanted to cover that today. Basically, leaky gut is exactly what it talks about. There's tight junctions in between, you know, in the intestines, the mucosa. And basically it's there, the intestines are important, right? Because when we're eating, we're exposed to bacteria. So the whole idea about the the gut lining is to protect our bodies, right? We don't want to be absorbing toxins. So what happens is that when there's leaky gut, there's more gut permeability, and some of those toxins get into our bloodstream, and they can wreak havoc on our body. Why it happens in the first place, I'm not really sure. It's probably associated with inflammation. But this is what I wanted to discuss today. So we know that there's different reactions, you know, what's going to cause it. Uh, there's a number of theories. If you think about inflammation itself, and I've spoken a lot about that in the group, we're having this inflammation uh, challenge this month or the inflammation review, I'd like to call it. But we know that inflammation itself is a problem, right? It has to do with our gut bacteria. There's our gut bacteria, our gut is filled with lots of different bacteria. And in some diseases, there's different groups of bacteria. Like you can look at whether it's autism or people with multiple sclerosis, people with different autoimmune diseases, um, people who are overweight. There's, you find different groups of bacteria, but what does that really mean? We're truly not sure. So anything to do with inflammation in itself can cause the gut bacteria to change. And it also has been associated with this intest increase in intestinal permeability. But like I said, we're not really sure what comes first. We know that diet has a lot to do with it. Diet in itself, and I've spoken about this before, it can change our gut bacteria. The, if you want to break it down like simple, bad bacteria like sugar, right? The good bacteria, they feed off of whole grains, they feed off of vegetables, they feed off of fruits. Those, they're filled with phytonutrients and phytochemicals, and they help our gut bacteria Sugar doesn't help our gut bacteria. It actually hurts our gut bacteria. And that's why we perhaps see different groups of bacteria with different diseases. And the same thing, like I mentioned, even people who are overweight, people who have autoimmune disease. I'm reading actually a really good book right now by Dr. Sabine Azan. She is she wrote this book. It's called Let's Talk About SHIT. I'll do a picture and I'll uh, do a book summary when I'm finished with that here in the group. Nonsteroidals, we know that nonsteroidals, yes, they help fight infection like joint inflammation, but the problem is they are also hurt our gut lining. If you think about it, we know that people who are taking nonsteroidals more likely to have gastritis, which is bleeding and irritation, and even a lower GI bleed or even an upper GI bleed. It's an irritation, like it causes irritation of the gut lining itself. So because of there's because of that, it makes sense that there would be increased um, intestinal permeability. Alcohol too. I love my glass of wine at nighttime. However, when you're drinking too much alcohol, it's harsh on our, our gut and it can cause increased gut permeability. Some of the deficiencies such as vitamin A and vitamin D and even zinc, they've been associated with uh, changes in gut permeability as well. Now here lies the problem. We hear so much about different diets, you know, this fat diet or that fat diet, get rid of this food group. Don't, you know, don't eat this food group. The problem with that is that when you start eliminating full, you know, types of, if you're eliminating different types of food and then eliminating different food groups, you're more likely to have a micronutrient deficiency. That's why our body needs those rainbow of colors and different types of, um, you know, whether it's the, the macronutrients and the micronutrients as well. It helps prevent a micronutrient deficiency. So just be careful of those diets. And if you're on one of those diets or eliminating something, unless you've been, you know, with going through this with medical supervision, just be careful. People with autoimmune disease, sometimes an elimination to diet is recommended. But solely after you do it and you see if there's changes or not, you want to start introducing those foods back again. Because again, they all those different types of food will help prevent 
micronutrient deficiencies, except for things like, you know, the refined carbohydrates we can do without, sugar we can do without. I, you know, always replace those with whole grains. And as far as sugar, I love to do, you know, if I need to have something sweet, I can add a little cinnamon. It has a sweet flavor to it. So chronic inflammation, we've talked about that. It's associated with a lot of different diseases. I've mentioned this before. The World Health Organization, they estimate about over 50% of the deaths worldwide are associated with inflammation. So again, if inflammation in our body, it makes sense that we'd have increased gut permeability. Stress, the same thing. Stress in itself may change our gut bacteria, has been associated with increased gut bacteria, increased uh, gut Per, uh, intestinal permeability. So just something to keep in mind. It's important to really do those deep breathing exercises. Be careful with the levels of stress. And in my program, which you can find at Sharon Mac Wellness, it's down below. You can take a look. Um, you can. We talk a lot about stress because it's so important with our overall health. So just be careful of that. And remember, um, you know, sleep is important, but there's other things as well. And be careful with the foods that you're eating. Some of the foods are associated with different types of yeast. And that could be something um, simple as peanuts. Sometimes there's overgrowth of mold. So just be careful of the foods that you're eating. Different diseases are associated with intestinal permeability. They kind of make sense if you think about it. Celiac disease, right? People with celiac are more sensitive to gluten, which is found in um, root, rye, barley, wheat. So when you have those foods, more sensitive, right? Their intestines get, in, get uh, inflamed. And then because of that, there's increased gut permeability. Diabetes too, diabetes type one that is. Diabetes type one is um, you know, considered an autoimmune disease. There's increased intestinal permeability. So what happens with, intest with diabetes type one? Basically, our beta cells and pancreas, they don't produce enough insulin. And so because of that, we develop type one diabetes. Now, type 2 diabetes is a bit different. We have diabetes. I mean, we have insulin. We're able to produce it, but our bodies don't use the insulin. It's kind of like we are resistant to insulin. So that's pretty much just think about type 2 1 diabetes. It has been associated with increased intestinal permeability. Crohn's disease is another one, but it makes sense, right? With Crohn's disease, there's inflammation. Sometimes we get bloody diarrhea. We get pain, gas, bloating. Intest intestines themselves, the lining are disrupted. Because of that, there's some ulcers. Um, and again, we get some bloody diarrhea. So it makes sense that there's increased gut permeability. Same thing with irritable bowel syndrome, whether it's constipation or diarrhea, or most people with irritable bowel, they go back and forth. So because of that, there's some gut permeability. Food allergies, you know, food, any type of food allergies, the same idea. When you're having a food allergy, it again causes irritation of the intestines. Because of that, you're going to have some gut permeability issues. You're going to see that leaky gut more often when you have a food allergy. So if you have any questions, make sure you know you put them down below. That pretty much sums it up in a nutshell as far as leaky gut. And now the question is, what do we do with leaky gut? Are there some things that we can do to help make it better? And they definitely are. Not 100%, but some things like I mentioned, the non steroidals be careful if you don't need them, stay away from it. Maybe you want to consider ibuprofen or nothing at all. Sometimes uh, the topical creams, they help just as well if you're having some joint pain. So be careful of the non-steroidals. Be careful of the sugar and the refined grain, the uh, refined grain or refar refined carbohydrates, I should say. And that could be cakes and cookies and pretzels. They're all made from a grain that has then had its fiber stripped and all the micronutrients stripped. It's all you know processed because of that it's absorbed quickly it kind of it the bad bacteria love that unfortunately so make sure that you're eating foods that again the vegetables the fruits the whole grains probiotics do you have to take a supplement probably not but there's some foods out there that are great such as some of the yogurts with like cultures sauerkraut is another one kefir uh, some of the japanese foods like miso all probiotics. What do I mean by probiotic? They actually have live bacteria in them. So when you're eating them, they help flourish our gut bacteria, help flourish the gut lining. And sometimes after a course of antibiotics, we wipe out a lot of the bacteria. And it kind of throws off the, the um, 
it's not so much gut ratio, but there's different, there's a ton of different gut bacteria. So when you have something like antibiotics, they can wipe out some of the different colonies. So it's good to help flourish. Just make sure you go through this with your physician, especially if you're immunocompromised. And what I mean by that is if you have an autoimmune disease and you're on a biologic, if you're on chemotherapy, if you have certain diseases that cause immunosuppression, you don't want to be taking a probiotic um, we're eating those types of foods with live bacteria because we worry about infection. You don't, you're not good at fighting infection. So just definitely discuss that with your physician. And like I mentioned, some of the, the fermented foods, which are the probiotics, will help um, restore the gut bacteria after antibiotics. High fiber foods, I mentioned, and really just staying away from the nonster oils, which I've also mentioned. Remember, in my program, I will always push whole grain foods foods that don't come out of a box or a bag. I'm not into supplements at all. Um, certain types, and I've talked about this on my other videos, like vitamin D. I'm here in New York. We don't get a lot of sun exposure. So because of that, I've been tested before and I'm vitamin D deficient. So I take a vitamin D uh, supplement. But in general, if you're healthy, you don't need supplements. So just, you know, save your money, save your time going to the stores, and just really eat good, healthy foods. So if you have any questions, reach out to me. I'd love to see you in my program. Uh, I really, this is, a, you know, a message or a mission for me because I have an autoimmune disease myself. I, yeah, I've i been able to lose weight, lost 20 pounds, and I've kept it off. So my system works for me. I had good reviews from other people. So if you have any questions, reach out. I'll see you guys on another video. Bye-bye.